Newton's mathematical sources, as far as we know, were not numerous. That is to say, as far as we, we know, Newton had, or the young Newton, had on his table very few books of mathematics. We have annotations from six books, actually, but uh, one is William Oughtred's Clavis Mathematice, the key to mathematics, and also a volume of Viet's uh, works. From these books, Newton learned how to use algebra, how to deal with algebraic equations, how to find the roots of algebraic equations, and so on and so forth. Another source of Newton was Descartes' Geometria in the Latin edition of 1659-1661. This was a rather thick book because it included not only the translation into Latin of Descartes' Geometrie, but also many annotations written by these bright Dutch mathematicians coordinated by Franz van Scholten. Jan Hude and others. Um, a third source for Newton was John Wallis. John Wallis, uh, in particular, uh, John Wallis' Arithmetica Infinitorum, a work where uh, the civilian professor of geometry. Uh, dealt with the so-called quadrature of the circle. Squaring the circle meant finding a square whose area is equal to the area of the circle. That's why we call about quadratures. Wallace employed infinitesimal methods that he had learned from Torricelli and um, that is reading Torricelli's works. And uh, s the first mathematical discoveries that Newton did uh, were based on his annotations on Wallace's Arithmetica Infinitorum. Another source mathematical source for the young Newton was Isaac Barrow. Barrow was a very talented mathematician and uh, he was the, the Lucasian professor of mathematics in Cambridge since 1663. Uh, Newton arrived in Cambridge in 1661 and uh, they were fellows in the same college. Trinity College. So it is very likely that they had the contacts. And uh, there are many aspects of Barrow's mathematics that resemble Newton's mathematics. And um, Newton, in his uh, old age, always uh, remembered Barrow and mentioned Barrow as one of his uh, uh, you know, uh, mentors in mathematics. Well, for a whole variety of reasons, Barrow was very important for Newton as a mathematician. Barrow had uh, the idea that uh, the best way to conceive of mathematical magnitudes is to conceive them as generated by motion. And uh, Newton uh, did the, the very same thing. Also for Newton, mathematical magnitudes should be conceived of as generated by motion. And Newton called uh, magnitudes generated by motion fluence, fluent magnitudes. And their instantaneous speed was called by Newton their fluxion. So a point, for instance, moves and generates a line and uh, uh, 
this is the fluent quantity. The fluent quantity is, uh, is uh, this line generated by the motion of the point, and the instantaneous velocity of the point is called its uh, fluxion. Now, these ideas are very Newtonian ideas. Uh, it's clear that Newton was a very crea creative mathematician, but he derived, it is very likely that he derived these ideas from Barrow's work. If one reads uh, Barrow's Lecciones Geometrice, or La Barrow's Lecciones Mathematice, for instance, one finds many resonances between the way in which Barrow conceived uh, magnitudes and the way in which Newton conceived magnitudes. But there is another reason why Barrow was important for Newton, and this is the fundamental theorem, of the, the so-called fundamental theorem of the calculus. This theorem is very important, and uh, as historians somewhat improperly we we use this term that was never used by Newton or by Barrow. And uh, I would say that it, it is improper to talk about the fundamental theorem in the case of Barrow and Newton also because uh, for us the fundamental theorem of the calculus has to do with functions and operators on functions. So uh, we are taught at school that uh, the calculus deals with functions and that there are operations on functions, differentiation and integration, and the fundamental theorem tells us that in a way these two operations are one the inverse of the other. Nothing like that can be find, found in, uh, in Newton's mathematics, but Newton expressed in geometric terms a result that uh, uh, corresponds uh, to uh, what we call the fundamental theorem of the calculus. Now, this theorem is very important, and Newton, um, one of Newton's bright ideas was to understand why this theorem is so important. In many cases, in fact, in the history of mathematics, we find that the great advance, the great idea, is to understand the importance of theorems that are under the eyes of everybody, in a way. So the fundamental theorem of the calculus was stated by Barrow, and uh, Newton, it seems likely that Newton got this idea from Barrow. Or he might have gotten this idea from one of Van Schoten's pupil, Van Hera, who in the annotations to the geometry uh, does something similar to that. Another great mathematician, James Gregory, uh, got very close to understanding uh, the fundamental theorem. So if you ask me why was Barrow important for Newton, I would reply as follows. The conception of magnitude that Newton adopted is very Barrowian in character, and uh, the fundamental theorem of the calculus might have been uh, uh, inspired by Barrow. So uh, Newton read two books by Wallace that were very important for him, and um, uh, the most important work by Wallace for Newton was certainly the Arithmetica Infinitorum. 